In this video, we're going to combine gas laws and energy calculations with stoichiometry to solve various problems. So for our reaction, we are reacting sodium bicarbonate with hydrochloric acid. It'll make sodium chloride, water, and carbon dioxide gas. Well, these are all one to one to one to one. And while this is not the real value if you do it and test it, for our purposes, we are going to use that the delta H of this reaction is negative 5.6 kilocalories. So we have information about the balanced reaction, about the enthalpy of the reaction, and we are told that we throw X grams of sodium bicarbonate and 5 grams of hydrochloric acid into a beaker and then fill it with water up to a total of 100 milliliters. So down here, I've just, I have a beaker, there's some sodium bicarbonate, there's some HCl, and there's liquid. That liquid is water, we fill it with water. They were aqueous solutions at the, in the balanced reaction. Well, the vast majority of that liquid in the beaker is the water. Yeah, there's some dissolved salts as well, but it's mostly water. And so this leads us to a few assumptions. One of which is we're going to just assume the solution acts like pure water, that it has the same S value. Technically, it would be slightly off, but you'd have to know it for every mixture. Luckily, if your mixture is mostly water, your S value should still be pretty darn close to water. So we're going to assume that our S value is the same as water for our solution. We're also going to assume that all the heat that re is released in the reaction, so when sodium bicarbonate and HCl react, and they release some heat, so the negative delta H of reaction over here says that they lose energy themselves. So the bond potential has lowered, that heat is given away, and it immediately just runs into the physical water, which means the water gets hotter. So our second assumption is that all of the heat from this reaction goes into the liquid around it and heats up our solution. And this is actually pretty true if you have a good insulated container. Um, in my 161 classes, we actually just use styrofoam coffee cups. Styrofoam is a pretty darn good insulator, and we will do reactions in a volume of liquid and look at how the temperature changes. So it's not unreasonable to assume that you can keep all the heat in the liquid. Well, our goal is to find the volume of CO2 that was produced if it is at 20.1 degrees Celsius and 755 millimeters of mercury. Additionally, there's a second goal. I am telling you that sodium bicarbonate is limiting. The question is, well, how limiting was it? And so those are our two goals. How much sodium bicarbonate did we use? And what volume of CO2 was produced? Now there's two parts to this. I want you to pause once and just plot out what you would need to calculate. Don't try the numbers yet. Just what things are we going to need to figure out? What would our process be? Go ahead and pause after that. Check it. We'll walk through it. Then we'll pause again and actually give a chance to run the numbers. So give a second, just think about what the process to connect all this might be. All right, well, if you're back, let's think about what we've really got going on here. I really have two separate things at work. The first thing we've got going on is that we are heating up water. My water is getting hotter. This tells us something about the water. The only equations that we have for heating the liquid would be Q equals ms delta T. Well, what do I have for that one? We have an S value. We said we can assume that it's a lot like water. I have a delta T. I'd need a mass. And while technically it's not going to be perfectly what we expect, we need to figure out what would our mass of solution be. So we would have to be told this one. As you add sodium 
Bicarbonate and HCl to solution, you're going to need a little less water. The densities will actually determine the real mass, but effectively we said we just got to assume that this was pure water. We just assume the solution acts like pure water, and 100 milliliters is roughly 100 grams of water. Not the greatest assumption, since there is some salts dissolved, but that was our assumption. We assumed that our solution got to act like pure water. Without actually measuring the total in the end, we'd never know for sure, but it's going to be close. Like The weight isn't going to be that far off. It might be 102, it might be 98. It's going to be pretty close to 100. So realistically, we also probably have a close enough mass. We could find the energy that must have gone into the water. Well, where does that come from? That is our Q of the water. However much energy goes into the water must have left a reaction. So the Q of the water must be the energy that left the reaction. So we need to find the energy of the reaction, which, well, that's what delta H is for. So whatever we find goes into the water, that must have been the amount that left the reaction. And we have a balanced equation that says, hey, there's 5,600 calories, so 5.6 kcal, for every one mole of NaHCO3. So we can actually find the moles, and thus the grams, of our limiting reagent. Once we know the moles of our limiting reagent, that tells us our product. So if we can take the moles of NaHCO3 and convert it to mole of our CO2, then we can find the moles of CO2 and we can use the ideal gas law to find the volume of CO2. So our end goal of finding the volume of carbon dioxide was dependent on knowing the moles of carbon dioxide. The moles of carbon dioxide is dependent on the limiting reagent, which we said was sodium bicarbonate, and so we had to solve how much sodium bicarbonate we had. Well, if I can find any one part of the balanced reaction, I can find the others, and thanks to water heating up, I can find the energy of the reaction, which will let me then find the moles of my other chemicals reacted. Let's give it a try. Go ahead and pause. See if you can solve it. What is our moles of sodium bicarbonate? What is our volume of carbon dioxide? All right, if you're back, well, let's give it a try. First step, I need to solve that energy. So there's some Q of the water. It's going to equal the mass, which we said was about 100 grams. Not the most accurate, but should be pretty close. We're assuming the solution acts like pure water. The S value, one calorie per gram degree Celsius, and delta T. Well, delta T, I had 22.3 degrees Celsius, and it started at 20.1 for a difference of 2.2 degrees Celsius. So we had 2.2 degrees Celsius for our delta T. So the Q of water is that it is 220 calories. To make our hundred-ish grams of water, of our solution, that we're pretending is pure water, go up 2.2 degrees, it would have taken 220 calories of energy. So I have the energy that went into water. Well, it means that much energy must have been lost from our reaction. So negative 220 calories was lost from the reaction. But there is a ratio of energy of reaction to moles of starting material or to any other chemical in the balanced reaction. 
at negative 5.6 kcal. So a kcal is a kilocalorie, so there's a thousand calories per kilocalorie, so negative 5,600 calories versus one mole. For every mole of sodium bicarbonate that reacted, it should have released 5,600 calories. We only released 220, so there was some lesser number of moles that reacted. 220 divided by 5,600. 0 0.0393 mole of NaHCO3. If I would have given off 5,600 calories for one mole, but I only gave off 220, then I must have had this fraction of a mole. So 0 0.039 moles of sodium bicarbonate. Well, once I know the moles of sodium bicarbonate, I can find moles of CO2. And just because technically we asked for the weight of sodium bicarbonate, for every one mole of NaHCO3, there is 84.0 grams of it. So it really would have been about 3.3 grams of sodium bicarbonate. But to find the moles of CO2, I need to use the moles of bicarbonate. So 0 0.0393 mole of NaHCO3. And if I want to get out of moles of one chemical and into mole of a second chemical, I need a ratio of them. The balance reaction gave us at 1 to 1. It's just the coefficients in front on the balanced reaction, which we didn't even have to write because if they're 1, we just leave it blank. But if we check, there's one sodium on each side, there's one chlorine on each side. There's a total of two hydrogens spread out, so two hydrogens on both sides. There's one carbon, there's one carbon, there's three oxygens, there's three oxygens. These are all one to one to one to one to one. So it means we need exactly the same number of moles, 0, 3, 9, 3 mole of CO2. So by finding the energy that went into heating the water and knowing that it came from the bicarbonate reacting, we could solve how much bicarbonate actually reacted based on that balanced reaction, including the enthalpy. Once we knew the sodium bicarbonate that reacted, we could find the CO2 that was produced. And the final bit for two was to find CO2 volume. For that, we said it was 20.1 and 755. So 20.1 degrees Celsius, 755 millimeters of mercury, and 0 0.0393 mole. I've got a temperature, I've got a pressure, I've got moles. My ideal gas law is PV equal nRT. I'm trying to find the volume, so I need to move the pressure. So I divide it over to get volume on its own side. And then I need to plug in my moles, 0 0.0393 mole. R value. Well, for millimeters of mercury and tor, it's the same for both of them, my R is 62.36 millimeters mercury per liter or times liter per mole. Kelvin. My temp is not 20.1. I need it in Kelvin. So 20.1 plus 273 is 293.1. So I get my Kelvin and my pressure was 755 millimeters of mercury. To then solve my volume, 0 0.0393 times 62.36 times 293.1 divided by 755. We will find that my volume is 0 0.951 liters. And arguably for sig figs, if we go way back to the start, we had 5.6 kcals. 
And that was our least sig figs of any values we were calculating. So we're going to have two sig figs in our final answer, 0 0.95 liters.